Hello everyone. Sorox is one to nine here. Bring you a interesting game. This is Nice on Old Republic One. Now I did not expect to do a live stream for this game. Because so many people have already done this before on YouTube, but um, I think I'll go ahead and stream this video game for a friend of mine. So that's what I'm gonna do. Right, so Knights of the Old Republic was made back in 2003, made by BioWare, the company I'm sure you all know is famous for, as like Tor. Or Mass Effect series and or Dragon Age Origins. I correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Knights of the Old Republic is the first game Bioware ever made, or one of the earliest games. So yeah, this takes place roughly four thousand years in the past. Uh, right before episode 1, I believe. Or right before the movies, I should say. Alright, so... So let's get started then. There is something I want to make a, a note here. There is a... I like to say there's a slight complication with the uh, movies, the cutscenes I mean. So whenever a cutscene happens, I'll have to change settings just so you can see the movie. Because apparently the movie is not part of the game, believe it or not. Which is why it's not really displaying well. But don't worry, I figure out a way to temporarily fix that. Alright, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So we got the soldier, the scout, and the scoundrel. Whenever I play this game, I usually go with soldier because it helps with the combat. I believe scout is a basically becoming aware of your situations and trying to get your mess out of things. The scoundrel Alright, so the scoundrel I believe they are like a computer technician spikes. So my real life friend wanted me to uh, wanted to try scout but he told me I should pick whatever. Um So obviously, I think we're gonna go with male, obviously, because I'm not a female. Alright, so, what do you guys think? Should I go with soldier, should I go with scout, or scoundrel? in peace. Alright, I'll tell you what. I'm gonna go with Soldier because that's pretty much the only known class I ever done. 
I don't know how to do scout or scoundrel very well in this game. So we're gonna go with soldier. There you go. That's my guy right there. Whenever you're a soldier, you always want to have your strength up. This, uh, this dex is basically like a defense, but it's also with aim. So yeah, it also says in the description here. I think that'll do it. Eh, why not? I'll get Fury. I th I think I should do a poll. What do you guys think our name should be? Alright, so what do you guys think we should name our character? Oh, what do you know? It's got my name on it. Should we go with that? I guess we'll go with their name. Alright, uh... Before we actually play, let me go ahead and switch the, uh... Game Auto Detect to a desktop region. So you guys can see the cutscene. Alright, let's begin. Do note that this might be a little laggy, just so you guys know. Nothing I can do about it. Star Wars. Nothing but Star Wars. Da, 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 da. Knights of the Old Republic. Da, da. Four thousand years before the rise of the Galactic Empire, the Republic verges on a collapse. Darth Malak, last surviving apprentice of the Dark Lord Revan, has unleashed an invincible Sith Armada upon an unsuspecting galaxy. Crushing all the resistance, Malak's war of conquest has left the Jedi Order scattered and vulnerable as countless knights fall in battle, and many more swear allegiance to the new Sith Master. In the skies above the Outer Rim world of Taurus, a Jedi battle's fleet engages the forces of Darth Malak in a desperate effort to halt the Sith Galactus domination.
da 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 I just did not want to get that copyright. I just hope I didn't. Switch it back to the game auto detect so I have much better FPS. Yeah, this game is a classic. I'm Trask Olgo, ensign with the Republic Fleet. I'm your bunkmate here on the Endar Spire. You work opposite shifts. I guess that's why you haven't seen me before. Now hurry up! We have to find Bastila. We have to make sure she makes it off the ship alive. Bastila is the commanding officer on the Endar Spire. Well, not an officer, really, but she's the one in charge of this mission. One of our primary duties is to guarantee her survival in the event of an enemy attack. You swore an oath just like everyone else on this mission. Now it's time to make good on that oath. I've heard all about your reputation. Elite combat training tops in your class. It's no wonder you were handpicked for this mission. Word is the officers haven't seen a recruit with your kind of potential in 20 years. But all that potential doesn't mean a thing if you can't deliver when it counts. We're soldiers. We're trained for combat. Bastil is going to need men and women like us at her side during this attack. All right, let's go and help Bastil out. So hurry up and grab your gear. You need to suit up so we can get out of here. Yeah, 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 I get it. Stick together. You'll have more success with a party than on your own. Because of the attack, this room is in lockdown. But don't worry, I've got the override codes. You'll have to use me to unlock the door. Use you? Wow. That's really weird. Now that the door is open, you better take the lead again. This is Cardinal Nassi. The Sith are threatening to overrun our position. We can't hold out long against their firepower. All hands to the bridge! That was Karth contacting us on our portable communicators. He's one of the Republic's best pilots. He's seen more combat than the rest of the Endire Spire's crew put together. If he says things are bad, you better believe it. We have to get to the bridge to help defend Bastila. There's a map of the Endar Spire and a copy of Karth's message in your electronic journal, just in case we get separated. Now I gotta. All right now I gotta let you guys know I'm gonna be saving often on this level. Guess whatever reason for this game, it always crashes me whenever I'm in the middle of this uh, area. I don't know why, but we'll just gonna have to keep saving, and hopefully it doesn't crash on us. Boarding party for the Republic. Is 
resolution hotfix. Do I do the resolution to hard fix? Uh, no, I don't think I did. So good, I didn't no crashes yet.
off. You get to the escape pods. Go! Well, your sacrifice would not be in vain. Alright, let's go. This is Karth Onassi on your personal communicator. I'm tracking your position through the Endar Spire's life support systems. Basilis escape pod is away. You're the last surviving crew member on the Endar Spire. Now I can't wait for you much longer. You have to get to the escape pods. Starting. I knew something like this was going to happen. It's a good thing I've been saving often. It's always this section of the game where it crashes the most. Time for questions later. Well said, Koth. Let me go ahead and change this to the screen. 
so we can see him booby. Don't tell me to actually skip that movie. It totally did, didn't it? Son of a bitch. You gotta be kidding me. It skipped that scene. Good to see you up instead of thrashing about in your sleep. You must have been having one hell of a nightmare. I was wondering if you were ever gonna wake up. I'm Karth, one of the Republic soldiers from the Endar Spire. I was with you in the escape pod. Do you remember? So, yeah. Basically, they pretty much crash land on Terrace. Apparently, they skipped that movie scene. Sweet. That's just strange. I'm not surprised. You took a serious blow to the head. You're probably having all kinds of strange dreams. I wouldn't worry too much about it. You've been slipping in and out of consciousness for a couple of days now, so I imagine you're pretty confused about things. Try not to worry. We're safe. At least for the moment. We're in an abandoned apartment on the planet of Terrace. You were banged up pretty bad when our escape boat crashed, but luckily I wasn't seriously hurt. I was able to drag you away from our crash site in all the confusion, and I stumbled into this abandoned apartment. By the time the Sith arrived on the scene, You don't have to thank me. I've never abandoned anyone on a mission, and I'm not about to start now. Besides, I'm gonna need your help. Terrace is under Sith control. Their fleet is orbiting the planet, they've declared martial law, and they've imposed a planet-wide quarantine. But I've been in worse spots. I saw on your service records that you understand a remarkable number of alien languages. That's pretty rare in a raw recruit. But it should come in handy while we're stranded on a foreign world. There is no way the Republic will be able to get anyone through the Sith blockade to help us. If we're gonna find Bastila and get off this planet, we can't rely on anybody but ourselves. That smack to your head did more damage than I thought. Bastila's a Jedi. She was with the strike team that killed Darth Revan, Malak's Sith Master. Bastila's the key to the whole Republic war effort. The Sith must have found out that she was on the Endor Spire and set an ambush for us in this system. I believe Bastila was on one of the escape pods that crashed down here in Terrace. For the sake of the Republic war effort, we have to try and find her. Bastila is no ordinary Jedi. She has a rare gift the Jedi call battle meditation. Bastila's power can influence entire armies. Through the Force, Bastila can inspire her allies with confidence and make her enemies lose their will to fight. Often that's all it takes to tip the balance in a battle. Of course there are limits to what she can do, but from what I understand of her ability, it requires great concentration and focus to maintain her battle meditation. The attack on the Endar Spire happened so fast, she never had a chance to use her battle meditation. Like us, she barely got out alive. Bastila's gonna need our help. Many of Darth Malak's followers can use the dark side of the Force, and the Sith have already killed more than their share of Jedi in this war. Nobody will be looking for a couple of common soldiers like us, and if we're careful, we can move about the planet without attracting notice. A luxury Bastila won't have. She's gonna have half the Sith fleet looking for her. They know how important she is to the war effort. The whole planet is under quarantine. No ships can land or take off. So, if Bastila's gonna escape Terrace, she's gonna need our help, and we'll probably need hers. While you were out, I did some scouting around. There are reports of a couple of escape pods crashing down into the Undercity. It's probably a good place to start. But the Undercity's a dangerous place. We don't want to go there unprepared, and it won't do Basil any good if we go and get ourselves killed. I'll tell you whatever I can, though I, I don't know how much help it'll be. Everything I know about Malak is pretty much common knowledge. He escaped the trap that killed Darth Revan, his Sith Master. With Revan's death, 
Malak became the new Dark Lord. It's obvious that Malak's a ruthless tyrant who'll crush anyone who stands in his way, just like Revan was. Experience has shown that the Sith won't stop until the Republic lies in ruins. Malak and his Sith don't respect anything except raw, brutal power. It's hard to imagine how someone who used to be a Jedi could become such a monster. Malak and Revan were once both part of the Jedi Order, but they were young and headstrong, and against the wishes of the Council, they went to battle the Mandalorians on the Outer Rim. Something happened out there. Something corrupted them and drew them over to the dark side. Or maybe there was something rotten inside them all along. I don't know. They formed an army of ex-Republic soldiers and Jedi who'd fallen to the dark side, with Revan at their head, until Revan was killed by Bastila's Jedi strike team. But even that didn't slow the Sith down. Malak just stepped in and assumed Revan's role. He took control of the Sith Armada and resumed the bloody conquest of the Outer Worlds. Well, I hope you're right. But the Republic hasn't been able to stop them so far, even with the support of the Jedi Council. I think Basila may be the galaxy's last hope. Taurus was once a magnificent planet-wide metropolis of towering skyscrapers. But that was a long time ago. The upper city where the rich citizens live is, is still pretty safe. If it wasn't for the Sith occupation and the planet-wide quarantine, it might not even be a bad place to live. But farther down, things have degenerated. The, the lower city is nothing but a slum overrun by swoop bike gangs, waging a never-ending war for control. And the undercity is, well, it's even worse. The lowest level of Terrace is a wasteland overrun by rat ghouls, mindless, diseased mutants that attack on sight. I've already entered all this info into your data pad journal. Good idea. We can use this abandoned apartment as a base. We can probably get some equipment and supplies here in the upper city. Just remember to keep a low profile. I've heard some grim stories about the Dark Jedi interrogation techniques. They said the Force can do terrible things to a mind. It can wipe away your memories and destroy your very identity. But I figure if we don't do anything stupid, we should be okay. I mean, after all, they're, they're looking for Basila. Not a couple of grunts like us. All right, soldier, let's move out. So that was quite a bit of info to take in. Since I don't believe there's any more cutscenes, got that. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and save this. We don't have to go through all that conversation again. And let's head back to the menu. Because I know you guys... I know the game skipped out a cutscene. Okay, so, desktop. That's how it happened. Back to the game. Alright, I don't believe it's gonna be any more, uh, any more movies for a little while. Should be fine with this. Right, you alien scum. Everybody, get up against the wall! This is a raid! That's how we sit deep with smart mouth aliens. Now the rest of you, get up against the wall before I lose my temper again! What's this? Humans hiding out with aliens? They're Republic fugitives! Attack! 
Wow. What a retard. Is the music too loud for you guys? Tong hai tuam jiji jong lumpa, ni ta poe tiki tu, dolpa da bangwaleo gandona chu chu. And I can tell you from experience that they aren't any good at all against a simple vibroblade. That's why the Republic has been training soldiers in hand to hand and melee combat. We barely have any trends for anything else. I mean, maybe for one med pack, but eh, we should be fine. There should be no more crashes from this point out on. Eh. Hopefully no more crashes from this point on. Oh come on Cord, we just talked. Yes, what's on your mind? Come on. Why isn't this working? There we go. Me? Well, I've been a star pilot for the Republic for years. Seen one of my ship wars. I fought in the Mandalorian Wars before all this started. But with all that, I've never experienced anything like the slaughter these set out on this kind nation. Not even the Mandalorians were that senseless. My home world was one of the first planets to fall to Malak's fleet. The Sith bombed it into submission, and there wasn't a damn thing our Republic forces could do to stop them. It shouldn't be my fault. I did everything I could. I followed my orders and did my duty, but that shouldn't mean I failed them. I, I did it. I know that. I'm not angry at you. Don't think that. I, I must not be making much sense. You probably mean well with your questions. I'm just not accustomed to talking about my past very much. At all, actually. I'm more used to taking action, keeping my mind focused on the business at hand. So let's just do that. If you have more questions, ask them later. So here's the escape pod that we crashed. seen you in my shop before. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Kebla Yurt. Welcome to the Equipment Emporium. You looking to buy some supplies? My shop's the largest one in all of Upper Terrace. Best selection on the planet. Whatever you need, I've got. Well, mostly. Mostly? What do you mean by that? The Sith confiscated all my heavy weapons and they impounded all my ships and swoop bikes. But I've still got a real nice selection, if you're interested. Huh. Just so you know, the prices on the items are final. 
No bargaining here. This isn't a swap meet, okay? I only deal in top-notch stuff. Alright then. I can't really sew anything right now. By the way, how is the volume, guys? Is it too loud? Or is it too, uh... Or is it alright? With the music, I mean. Now we'll have to watch the duel on the view screen. Who cares? It's Duncan and Gurlon fighting. It's not like we're gonna miss anything good. Shh, they're about to start, so quit complaining and just watch the view screen. Ladies and gentlemen, I draw your attention to the dueling ring. Here, two combatants will battle for your viewing and gambling enjoyment. Now, I hope all your bets are down because we're ready to roll. In this corner, I give you Gerlon Twofinger. And over here, looking to climb the ranks yet again, is the ever-persistent Deadeye Duncan. Blades and blasters, and nobody ever dies. How come I get the feeling you're trying to take us for a ride? Gioca con molera, quien con su pesa no va molera allí. Agua no rota, a con la toras maquilla. Has que bona, bona na cacho. This is for the best. We could use those credits from these duels, but using your real name is too risky. The Sith might have come across a crew manifest back in the Inner Spire. Let's do this, job of the hut. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. You've seen him lose night after night after night, but this time he's after fresh meat. In this corner, I give you Dead Eye Duncan. And in the other corner, a relative newcomer to the terrace dueling scene. Emerging from the shadows with no history, no past, and no name, the mysterious stranger! GG. Are any of 
a surprise. Did I losing, is it you? You have to do better than that to impress us, stranger. presentation in store for you. In this corner, one of the greats, a man so tough, even a disfiguring injury couldn't end his career. <laughs> I give you Gerlang Two Fingers. And in the other corner, a relative newcomer to the Tannis during scene, emerging from the shadows with no history, no past, and no name, the mysterious stranger. Right, so this is going to be interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. Over in this corner, a woman with steel on her bones and ice water in her veins. She's cold and quick as death itself. You know her. You love her. And in the other corner, a rising star taking the first step into the big leagues. I give you the mysterious stranger. I might not survive this, but we'll give it a try. Thank you. 
out cold. Looks like we have a rising star in the mysterious stranger, folks. But how high can this star soar? You'll just have to watch and see. Okay, that was actually close. Probably shouldn't use those mid packs, but what are you gonna do? We should get some decent credits now. Yeah, 682. That's some decent credits. Alright, let's go ahead and move on. Because I'm not ready to fight any more duels at right now. You guys are still there, right? Davik says you missed your last payment. Here, I I've got 50 credits, a down payment. That should buy me some time, right? Sorry, you're out of time. Now it's all or nothing. Davik can't have people not paying his debts. But I don't have that much. How can I give you credits I don't have? to kill me! I know we have to be careful about drawing attention to ourselves, but are we can just let them drag this guy off? Hold on a second. Looks like we got ourselves a witness here. You asked for this! Thank you. I owe you my life. Those bounty hunters are going to take me away and kill me! My life warned me not to take a loan from Tavik. Now I can't pay him back. It's not good to owe a crime lord money. He'll just keep sending more bounty hunters after me till I'm dead! You already helped me by saving me from those bounty hunters, so unless you have a spare 100 credits to give me so I can pay off Tavik, there's nothing else you can do. You've given me 100 credits? Just like that? I... I don't know what to say. Thank you. Thank you. You're giving him a hundred credits? Generous. Now I can pay off Davik. You've saved my life. Thank you. I'd better take these credits to him right away. Oh, well, we got a hundred credits back, so it was no loss. Still, you are welcome here. I will not have it said that Zelka Foreign refused to help somebody just because they weren't a citizen of Terras. Do you require healing or medical supplies? I can treat almost any injury or ailment right here at the medical facility. Except the wreck, of course. The terrible affliction has plagued Terras for many generations. It is spread by the wreck ghouls, horrible monsters that live in the Undercity below Terras's great skyscrapers. Prolonged exposure to the Undercity breeds the disease, and those infected will eventually mutate into rat ghouls themselves, becoming mindless beasts that feed on the flesh of others. Mm, there is no antidote for the disease, though I heard the Republic scientists at the military base here on Terras were close to perfecting a cure. Then the Sith arrived. They overran the military base, and now they refuse to allow anyone access to the laboratories inside. The Sith are keeping all the serum for the patrols they send into the Undercity. If I could just get my hands on a sample of that serum, the Rat Ghoul disease could be wiped from the face of Terrace forever. I don't see how that's going to happen. I 
don't see how anyone could get their hands on that serum. The military base is crawling with Sith guards. Breaking in there would be a suicide mission. I suppose the Sith patrols in the Undercity might have a sample of the serum on them. If they hadn't already used it because of a raccoon infection. But I doubt a patrol would just hand the serum over. And nobody is stupid enough to attack one of the Sith patrols, even in the Undercity. Please, don't say that! If the Sith hear you, they might think I'm suggesting you start attacking their patrols. They could shut me down. I only mentioned the serum because you asked. I don't actually expect anyone to get me the serum. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? I am quite busy maintaining the facility, but I suppose I could spare a bit of time to answer some questions. What would you like to know? Republic escape pods? No. Why would you ask me that? I don't know. Those pods crashed in the Undercity. I'm not involved in any way. I'm not defensive. I just don't like being accused of knowing something about those Republic pods. This is as bad as an interrogation by the Sith. The Sith were already here, asking these same questions. I'll tell you what I told them. I don't know anything about those pods. Now, is there something else you need? I am quite busy. I don't know much, but I'll tell you what I can. Do you want to know about Upper Terrace, or are you more interested in Lower Terrace and the Undercity? The Lower City has been overrun by swoop gangs and thugs. If you're going to travel down there, you'd better go on. If you don't get attacked by one of the swoop gangs, you'll probably end up beaten and robbed by one of Davik's thugs. Soon it will be as bad as the Undercity. The Undercity is a wasteland, crawling with flesh-eating mutants called Rackgoons. I feel sorry for the outcasts that are forced to live there. Justice here on Terrace is swift and harsh. There are only two punishments, execution or banishment to the Undercity. Anyone banished can never return on pain of death. Even their descendants are forced to live in the depths beneath our great cities. Whenever I can, I send supplies to the Undercity to help ease the misery of their lives. Although there is nothing I can do to help those infected with the raccoon disease. The lower city, if you don't get... Davik is the resident crime lord of Terrace. He deals in stolen goods, trades in slaves, and contraband. And it would take a month to list all the people he's made disappear. His slimy grasp even reaches here to Upper Terrace. Most of the shops pay him protection money, so he'll leave them alone. Yeah, the man is nothing but a thug. I guess I'm lucky. Since my medical facility doesn't make any profits, Davik doesn't bother me. But if you ask me, he's no better than the Sith. <laughs> I know enough to be scared of them. I've heard about the brutality of the Sith. I know what they do to the planets they conquer. So far, all they've done is ask me some general questions, but... I'm afraid they might one day decide to shut this facility down simply out of evil spite. I guess there's not much I can do about the Sith. Except hope that the Republic finds a way to stop their conquest of the entire galaxy. Of course. Just step over here and I'll show you what I have in stock. My prices are very reasonable. Just what I need to keep this facility operating. medical supplies? I can treat you right here at the center for almost any condition, except the raccoon disease, of course. It will just take me a moment while I examine your injuries, and then I'll administer the proper treatment. Welcome back. Are you in... I am quite busy maintaining the... Republic escape pods. I'm not defensive, I just don't like being accused of knowing something about those Republic pods. Well, you don't look like you're with the Sith. Uh, I guess I can tell you my secret. Or rather, I can show you. Since the space battle overhead, people have been secretly bringing in these Republic soldiers who crash-landed on the planet. 
I had to take them in. What choice did I have? Their injuries are terrible. Most won't survive. But at least I can make their last days more comfortable. And at least here, they're hidden away from the Sith. Well, for that, you have my thanks. It's good to know that at least some of these men ended up in compassionate hands. I hate to imagine what the Sith would do if they discovered these soldiers here. But since their initial questioning, the Sith have not returned, so it may be my fears are unfounded. I'm afraid there's nothing more anyone can do for these soldiers. Now, if you'll excuse me, I should return to the front in case anyone comes in needing medical attention. got an offer for you you might want to hear. Zelka isn't the only one who wants to get his hands on the Rakul serum. Davik Kang will pay you ten times what Zelka can if you can get the cure. Look, Zelka can't afford to pay me much if you sell the serum to Davik. I can probably get a nice finder's fee for directing you to him. Helping people is all well and good, but you have to help yourself first, right? I'm telling you, Davik will pay big credits for the cure. More than Zelka could ever afford. And then only the rich could afford the cure. Just let the poor suffer, right? If you find the Rakul serum, just take it to Zax in the Lower City Bounty Office. He works for Davik. He'll pay you what that cure is really worth. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna give it to Davik. Just, he just, he doesn't deserve it. had this talk like 15 minutes ago. Well, I don't want to talk to him. I guess I did say you could ask me questions later. Like, is this really necessary? No, no, I don't have a problem with it, really. Go ahead and interrogate me. No, I was just joking. Though you do seem to be full of questions. It's rather refreshing, to be honest. Let me ask you something first, though. I've been going through the battle of the end of our spire over and over in my head since we crashed. Some things just don't end up for me. Maybe you could tell me what happened, from your perspective. True. Bastila is as powerful as I say. She's the one who defeated Darth Revan in mm. I guess that no Jedi ability, no matter how powerful, makes up for being completely surprised and outmatched. We didn't choose that battle anyway. It got forced on us. Hell, I'm, I'm just as surprised that any of us are alive to talk about it. Come to think of it, it's more than a little surprising that you happen to be here, isn't it? But just what is your position with the Republic fleet anyway? Well, no. Unless you consider that you were a last minute addition to the roster and you just happened to be one of the survivors. You were the only one. Not to mention that Bastila's party was the one who requested your transfer. The Jedi requested numerous things when they came. And hell, they practically took over the ship, as far as I could tell. Considering your connection to Bastion and the Jedi, whether you know it or not, your presence here seems a little convenient. I'm probably wrong, and this is probably nothing. I learned a long time ago not to take things at face value, however, and I hate surprises. I expect you, right? I've got no real reason to suspect you of anything. Still, it's better to be safe than sorry. has nothing to do with you personally. I don't trust anyone. I have no reasons. And no, I'm not going to discuss them, so can we just keep our mind on more important things? Good. Like I said before, I prefer action to talk anyway. Hello, Sith soldiers. What is this planet coming to, huh? <gasps> Shlami's just walking around the upper city. Shouldn't you go to the lower says you belong, Shlami? Yeah, like he said, 
These streets are for upper city citizens. <laughs> you better get out of the way if you know what's good for you. A drink? Hey, for a shlummy, you ain't so bad. Come on, boys, this shlummy's buying the next round. <laughs> no way, forget it. No more drinks. We're laying enough as it is. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe next time, shlummy. <laughs> Come on, fellas, let's go. Oh my god. They're so freaking drunk. Listen to me, people. There is a terrible scourge sweeping our planet. He You'd think people would be a little more tolerant of others in this day and age. I guess stupidity and ignorance will never go out of style. Oh, that's 
He intruded out. Who does not hear from? Who start their grief? Do we choose to have fun with your Kelva? How is it? Choose the Dan Kelva. How is it, Dan Kelva? Who start their grief? walks among us. We did it, guys. Alright, we made it to the Undercity. Dumpa kunba yeya moka paata. Ona nai kachu. Ijuta. Nun pa. Kipona. Kava dumpa kunba yeya moka paata. Kill every enemy on here. Keep 
Puna, Kavadopa, Ku, Palea, Muka, Pata, Two. Gio Kaku, Inba, Muli, Rab, Wana, Ji, Kut, Hune, Hudu, Rananu, Prata, Dunko, Shirkaja, Three. Just a sec, boys. Sawbar, a little help here? I need you to rip the legs off some insects. <laughs> Quit complaining. You can finish eating later. Besides, you need the exercise, so get over here. Kiyokaku! Kimba muli rab wana ji! Kuyami juski chika nai! Uba maska dwana chichop! You got a problem with me? Then you got a problem with Big Z. So unless you want to take on my furry friend, I suggest you greenies hop on out of here. Chubasa! Kimba muli rab wana ji! Say, I don't recognize you and I know pretty much everyone in the lower city. You must be new down here. I guess that makes me and Big Z your official welcoming committee. It's not that strange. Most aliens can speak basic, they just prefer to use their own language. But I grew up here on Terra, so I just sort of got used to speaking the native tongue. You showed a lot of guts dealing with those Vulkers, kid. You got a name? My name's Mission Veo, and this big Wookiee is my best friend Zalbar. I'd offer to give you a tour, but the streets down here aren't safe. But if there's anything else you need... We just kind of fell in together. It ain't easy on your own here in the lower city. Everyone's always looking to push you around. So we noticed. Still, you seem like an odd pair. When I met up with Zalbar, it seemed like a pretty good match. I knew we could look out for each other. With my street smarts and his muscle, we make a great team. Well, you came to the right person. If you want info on Lower Terrace, I'm the one to talk to. Davig, the Lower City Gangs, I even got the scoop on that bounty hunter, Kalo Nord. Davik's part of the Intergalactic Crime Syndicate, but I guess everyone knows that. But I hear he's got a new ship for his smuggling operations, the Ebon Hawk. I don't know much about space travel, but I hear that ship's fast enough to break the Sith blockade. Of course, this is all just secondhand rumor. Where would he keep it, do you know? If Davik does have a ship, he's got it locked up in his estate. Nobody gets in there, except the people working for Davik and the Exchange. There's only two gangs worth worrying about here in the lower city. The Black Volkers and the Hidden Becks. Sometimes Zalbar and I hang out at the Beck base. The Becks are led by Gadden Beck. He's a good guy. Lost his sight in his swoop bike accident a few years ago, but even blind, he's a great leader. Not like that traitor Brezhik. Before he took over the Volkers, he was a Hidden Beck. Gadden considered that ungrateful space slug his adopted son. When Gadden went blind, everyone figured he'd step down and appoint Brezhik in his place. But Gadden figured Brezhik wasn't ready yet. He wanted him to wait a few years. But Brezhik was too impatient. He left to join the Volkers, and ever since, he's been waging a war to wipe Gadden and his Bex from the face of Terrace. This gang war in the Lower City is totally the Volkers' fault. They're the ones killing everything that moves out on the streets. It's like they've gone insane. Kalonord's one of the most famous bounty hunters in the galaxy. He's killed more people than the Iridian Plague. I've seen him kill people just for trying to talk to him. He hangs around Zack's bounty office, but I don't think he's looking for work there. All the postings there are small time. Way beneath the bounty hunter of his caliber. I figure Kalo's been hired by Davik to do a special job for the exchange. I'd wager a thousand credits that as soon as the quarantine ends, he'll be getting off this rock. You going? Yeah, this diet's pretty boring. No actual
action around here. Come on, Big Z, let's go. Can't you think about something besides your stomach for five minutes? Come on. We'll go see if there's anything good to eat at the Beck base. I can't see anything wrong with getting rid of people like that, as long as we don't end up on the list of victims. <laughs> Justice is one thing, but doing a crime lord's dirty work is something else. You can't just walk in here. This is the hidden back base. How do I know you're not a Vulcan spy sent to kill Gadon Thek? Maybe so. But this door is locked, and it's going to stay that way until I'm satisfied you're no threat to Gadon or the hidden backs. A lot of people want to go inside and speak to Gadon. He's a hero of the common folk. But the days of the Hidden Beck's open-door policy are gone. Between the Sith Conquest and the Vulcan Gang War, Gadon has more enemies than he used to. We're being careful about who we let in now. Well, we do need all the help we can get. And you don't look like you're with the Vulcans or the Sith. Besides, it's not like you can do anything to harm Gadon in the heart of his own base. Not with Zedra watching his back. Go in and speak to Gadon if you want. Just remember to be on your best behavior. The hidden backs are watching you. Hold it right.
right there. Who are you? And what is your business with Gadden? Calm down, Zandra. Nobody's going to try anything here in the middle of our own base. It would be a suicide mission. You're too trusting, Gadden. Brezhik and his Valkyrs want you dead. Anyone we don't know is a potential threat, and it's my job to make sure you're safe. Do you want us to start attacking strangers on sight, Zerdra? Like the Vulcans do? I will never let it come to that. Now step aside and let them pass. As you wish. You can speak to Gadden if you want, but I've got my eye on you. You try anything and you'll be vaporized before you can say Vulcan spy. You'll have to forgive Zerdra. Ever since Brezhik and the Vulcans began this war against us, she's been a little overzealous in her security duties. The problems with the Sith haven't helped things. Zerdra seems to forget that I know how to look after myself. Now, how can I help you? The escape bots? You know, I heard the Sith have been asking around the upper city about them as well. But you don't look like you're with the Sith. They might be spies, Gadden. They might be working for the Sith. Calm down, Zerdra. If the Sith thought we knew anything useful, they'd have a battalion of troops kicking down our door. No, I think this offworlder has his own agenda. I suppose I could tell you what I know. It's not like it could do any harm to me or my gang. But it might cause problems for the Vulcas, and that's okay in my book. The Vulcas stripped those pots clean within hours after they landed. It's too bad we didn't get there first, considering what my spies reported the Vulcas found. A female Republic officer named Vastila survived the crash. We Bex don't believe in intergalactic slavery. But the Vulcans aren't so picky. They took a prisoner. Normally, the Vulcans would take a captured slave and sell them for a nice profit to Davik, or an off-world slaver. But a Republic officer is no ordinary catch. I still think Bastila is just a Republic officer. That could work to our advantage. Maybe she'll even figure out a way to escape from the Vulcan base on her own. She's too valuable to leave with the Vulcan scum at the base. Brezhik's probably got your Republic friend hidden away somewhere safe until the big swoop race. You'll never find her. I'm afraid your friend has become a pawn in Brezhik's game to take over the lower city. He's offered her up as the Vulcan's share of the prize in the annual swoop gang race. By putting up such a valuable prize, Brezhik hopes to win the loyalty of some of the smaller gangs. Their numbers will allow him to finally destroy me and my followers. So how do you propose we go about rescuing Bastila, then? Well, we can't fight all the gangs. The only hope you have of rescuing Bastila is to somehow win the big season opener of the Swoop Race. I might be able to help you with this. If you'd be willing to help us. We both have something to gain here, and much to lose. The Swoop Race is for the lower city gangs only. I could sponsor you as a rider for the Hiddenbecks this year. If you win the race, you'll win your friend's freedom. But first, you have to do something for me. My mechanics have developed an accelerator for a swoop engine. A bike with the accelerator installed can beat any other swoop out there. But the Vulcans stole the prototype from us. They plan to use it to guarantee a victory in this year's swoop race. I need you to break into their base and steal it back. Getting into the Vulcan base won't be easy. The front doors are locked tight. But I know someone who might be able to get you in the back way. Mission Veil. Vale. Mission? Gaddon, you can't be serious. She's just a kid. How is she supposed to help them with this? Mission's explored every step of every back alley in the lower city. Plus, she knows the undercity sewers better than anyone. If anyone can get inside the Vulcan base, it's her. She and her Wookiee friend Zalbar are always looking to stir up a little excitement. They like to go exploring in the Undercity, despite the dangers. Your best bet is to look for her in the Undercity. But you'll need some way past the Sith Guard post at the elevator. A simple disguise might have worked on the Upper City card, but the security down here is much tougher. You'll need the proper papers to get past him. Luckily, my gang ambushed one of the Sith patrols headed down to the Undercity. They never made it, and their security papers fell into my hands. Since we're working together now, I suppose I could give them to you in exchange for your uniforms. With the security papers, you won't need a disguise anyway. Good choice. Thanks for the uniforms. You won't need them with these security papers anyway. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? Your time would probably be better spent going after the prototype swoop engine the Vulcan stole from us. But I'll answer your questions if I can.
When I lost my sight in the swoop bike accident, everyone assumed I would step down as leader of the Hidden Bex and let Brezhik, my most trusted follower, take over. But with my ocular implants, I can still see well enough to lead this gang. And I knew Brezhik wasn't ready to take over yet. Unfortunately, Brezhik didn't agree with me. In a rage, he left to join our arch-rivals, the Black Vulkers. A lot of the younger gang members followed him, and soon he and his followers had taken control of the Vulker gang. Brezhik is a proud man. My decision was a public humiliation for him. Maybe if I had stepped down, this gang war could have been avoided. Don't fool yourself, Gadden. Brezhik wants to control the lower city gangs. If you'd stepped down, he'd have led the Bex against the Vulkers. He wanted this war, one way or another. <sighs> I know your rights, Erdra. Brezhik won't rest until I am dead and the Bex are no more. But it's hard to accept the truth of his betrayal. Your time would probably be... Not while the Sith quarantine is in place. Even the fastest smuggler ships can't break the blockade of the fleet surrounding the planet without the proper launch codes. Any ship leaving the terrace atmosphere without the proper codes would be instantly disintegrated by blaster cannons fired by the Sith fleet's automated targeting systems. Feel free to come back anytime. We're not like those Vulcan savages. Strangers are welcome in the Beck base. All right. We're gonna go to the Undercity now. And sorry, I just haven't been talking that much. There's just not a whole lot to talk about right now. Alright, so we gotta go to the Undercity now. And look at that, some more Black Vulcans. are behind with your payments. What do you, uh, you think just because you're in some gang, you don't have to give Davik his cut? Ah, so you want to play this the hard way. <laughs> okay. Tunipudu! Rana no prata don't know, Sertja! What on the Wama Mulira? Kenjun Jubashak! No Bully Mulira! I knew you boys would see reason. Now get out of here. Too bad. I was looking forward to cracking some heads. Maybe next time, Candrus. You better get this over to Davik. I'll call you if anyone else gets behind on their payments. Those Valkers are dumber than a chorus and granite slug. They actually think being in that pathetic little gang of theirs makes them important. Gadon keeps his hidden Bex in line, but Brezhik's getting dreams of grandeur. If Davik's smart, he'll slap that young punk back down. I'm someone you don't want to get on the bad side of, and I'm not one for small talk. I don't have time to stick around here anyway. Davik's got me working on a special assignment. Only those with official Sith business are 
allowed into the Undercity. Unless you've got the proper security papers, you better just turn around and go back the way you came. Let me see... Uh, yeah, these look to be in order. Okay, you can go down if you want. Can't say I envy you, though. The Undercity is crawling with mutants. Rack ghouls, they call them. If you see anything moving down there, shoot first and ask questions later. You there! Upworlder! Anyone using this elevator has to pay the toll! Yeah, this is our elevator. If you use it, you gotta give us something. I don't believe this planet. Even the beggars are trying to shake us down. Five credits! That's what it costs to use our elevator. Five credits! We are the outcasts. Banished and reviled by those who dwell above. Here in the filth and darkness, we claw out a wretched existence, scavenging and begging just to survive long enough to see another wretched day. This is our village. We live here in the Undercity. You have to pay us five credits for using our elevator. Please have pity on us. We have nothing. All we ask is a few credits to make our lives easier. <laughs> credits, my brother! We have credits. Now we can buy food and medicine. Hush, or the others will hear us. They'll want our credits. We have to hide them. Go on, you two. Get out of here. I'm sorry about that. Those two beggars give everyone in the village a bad name. We aren't all like that, you know. Most of us are good people. I'm sure you are, miss. It's just too bad your little welcoming committee is here to give people a bad first impression. My name is Shalina. You're from the Upworld, aren't you? I've... I've never seen it. I was born here in the Undercity. Is it as nice as they say up there? I've never been to the surface, but sometimes I think I can see it in my dreams. The sun, the sky, the stars. It all sounds so... so... so wonderful. Gendar, the leader of our village, tells me I should spend more time trying to improve things down here, and less time dreaming about something I can never have. Maybe he's right. You probably think I'm a fool, having dreams of a place I've never even seen. But when I was little, Rukil used to tell me stories of what it was like up there. Rukil is the oldest man in the village. The kids call him Rukil Wrinkleskin, but he's a kind man. He used to tell me the greatest stories when I was a little girl. I still like to listen to his tales about the Promised Land, even though I know they're just legends, but it helps to make the Undercity seem less... less dark somehow. It's... it's just a story to make little children smile. Rukil believes in it, though. Sometimes I can almost believe it myself, but then I look around and see the ugly truth. I guess we have to make the best of what we have, though. If you really want to learn more about the Promised Land, you should speak to Rukil. Oh, okay. Well, if you ever need anything, or if you just feel like talking, come back and see me. I hardly ever get a chance to speak to someone from the Upworld. You, you come from the world above. Is this the time of destiny then? Is this a portent of the salvation of my people? Or merely another false sign to mislead us from the path? Are you the herald of prophecy? The beacon to guide us through the darkness? Or are you merely another harbinger of shattered dreams and unfulfilled promises? Be careful, this one might be crazy enough to be dangerous. Speak to me, Upworlder. Tell me what fate you unleash upon us. Salvation or damnation? Speak, Upworlder, I beg you! Question. You are uncertain, bewildered, perplexed. Understandable, I suppose. Even after a hundred years of life, I myself still become confused at times. 
Perhaps I can make things more clear. Some things, at least. My name is Rukil, the oldest outcast here in the village. Rukil Wrinklesken, the children call me sometimes. Once, I was honored for my wisdom. But over time, the villagers fell away from the true path. Eventually, there was only a single apprentice who followed me. And now she is gone, too. No. No, no, not yet. I must be wary. Careful. You may be a false savior. Dare I share my secrets with you? No. Not until you prove yourself. My apprentice is... lost. I sent her out into the Undercity to find... Well, I cannot tell you. Not yet. Sadly, my apprentice has not returned. Please, Upworlder, will you help an old man? Will you seek out my apprentice in the Undercity? Her name is Malia. I must know of her fate, whatever it may be. I must know what she found. Finding her may be difficult. Malia could be anywhere in the Undercity. But if you will find her, I will know you to be our true savior. Only then can I reveal my secret knowledge to you. I wish you luck, Upworlder. Come speak to me again once you have discovered the fate of my apprentice. from the village. You're from the upworld, ain't you? Yes, you've got credits, I bet. Watch yourself. There's something slimy about this guy. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. My name's Saigir. I run a little salvage shop here. You want to buy something from my store? I got some good deals. It ain't the best stuff. Mostly salvage and such, but the price is right. Let's move on. Hurry, Hendar! Hurry! I can hear it coming! He'll never make it. He's doomed. <sighs> I told him he was a fool to leave the village. He will make it. Run, Hendar! Run! Open the gate! Quickly! There isn't much time! Uh, I... I can't! The Rackles are too close! The mutants will kill him if you don't open the gate! And if I open the gate, they'll kill us all! No! You can't do this! It isn't fair! Please, make him open the gate! Hindar will die if he doesn't! I can't open the gate! Not while the Rackles are so near! You'd risk your life for a stranger? <laughs> You're brave, Upworlder. I'll open the gate for you, but you gotta be quick. In a few seconds, I must close and lock it again. Anything but these rags on my back. It would be yours. But we have nothing. I still have you, Hindar. That's all I need. Let's go back to the village. Thank you for saving Hindar. You are braver than I, Upworlder. Maybe we outcasts have lived too long in selfish fear. Perhaps we can learn a lesson from your brave actions. <laughs> but enough of my ramblings. Is there something you need, Upworlder? I'm Trellin, from the Outcast Village. It's my job to guard the gates and see they are locked to protect us from the Rat Ghouls. <laughs> I just guard the gates. Gendar is the leader of the village, Upworlder. You should speak to him if you have any questions. 
Goodbye, Upworlder. Please, you have to help me. Nobody else is gonna help me. Even the Bex won't help me. But I can't just leave him there. He, he's my friend. You'll help me, won't you? It's Zalbar. He's in trouble. Big trouble. We have to help him. If we don't, they'll sell him into slavery. Me, me and Zalbar, we were just wandering around here in the Undercity. You know, looking for stuff we could find, just kind of exploring. We do it all the time. I guess with a Wookiee at your side, you've got to figure you can handle the odd Rat Ghoul attack. Only this time, they were waiting for us. Gamorian slave hunters. We didn't even have a chance to run. Big Z threw himself at him and then roared for me to run. I, d I took off. I figured Zalbar would be right behind me. But there were too many of them. He couldn't get away. They're going to sell him to a slaver, I just know it. I don't know for sure, but those Gamorians like to hang out in the sewers. The stink reminds him of home, I guess. That's probably where they took Big Z. It's a deal. As soon as we get Big Z back, I'll show you a way into that Volker base. Now come on! We have to find Zalba before they sell him to slavers, or worse! Do you know where he's being kept? The Gamorians make their camps in the sewers. I bet that's where we'll find Zalbar. And that's where I'll show you the secret entrance into the Volker compound. Move! I'm... I'm not afraid to use this blaster if I have to. Settle down, kid. We've already lost enough men to those damn rat ghouls. The last thing we need now is more casualties from a needless firefight. Hmm. By the looks of you, I'd say you're down here for the same reason we are. To salvage something from those downed Republic space pods. Let me give you some advice. Forget about it. Do yourself a favor and just head back from where you came. Mandalorians don't make threats. We make promises. But I'm just trying to give you a friendly warning. This isn't a good place to stand around chatting. The Undercity is crawling with rat ghouls. I've already lost a half a dozen men to those monsters. Candrus, I heard something. Over there, in the shadows. Sounded like a rat ghoul. Looks like we've got company. Get those blasters ready, boys. Davik, this salvage mission was a bad idea. His men aren't trained for this kind of thing, and I can't babysit them all. Okay, boys. We're getting out of here before I lose anyone else. I can't carry all this salvage back by myself. You'd be smart to get out of here as well. Even if you can handle the rat ghouls, I doubt there's anything worth finding anymore. Come on, boys. Let's move out.
What?
Hey, Karth. You're a pilot for the Republic, right? You've been all over the galaxy, I bet, right? So tell me, how would you rate Taurus compared to other worlds you've seen? To be honest, Mission, Terrace would rate pretty low. The prejudice, the rich spoiling themselves while the poor are crushed beneath them. It, it's not a pretty picture. Yeah, but that's only since the Sith occupation. Before that, well, I guess it wasn't all that different, really. Hmm. Maybe Taurus ain't as great as I thought, you know? Trust me, Mission, there are a lot of worlds better than Terrace. There, there are worse, too, but Terrace is no place for a kid to live on her own. Even a kid who's got a Wookiee to look out for. Hey! I ain't no kid. I look out for Zalbar as much as he looks out for me. Bixie's my friend, not my babysitter. Jeez, I come ask you a question, you give me a lecture. Don't you snap at me, Missy. You want a lecture? How's this? Only bratty little children fly off the handle because of a simple comment. I don't have to listen to you, Karth. You ain't my father, though you're sure old enough to be. So keep your lectures inside your withered old head, because I don't need them. And I sure as hell don't need this. Look, let's just drop it and get back to what we were doing. Children. Alright, before we go to the sewers, let's get the old man what he wants. The journal. Greetings once more, Upworlder. Do you bring news of my apprentice? Have you discovered her fate and proved yourself to be a true savior of my people? It is as I feared, then. She joins the list of those who have given their lives in the service of our cause. But though I am saddened by this news, there is yet hope. By finding my apprentice, you have proved yourself worthy, Upworlder. You are to be the beacon on our path to salvation. You will guide us to the promised land. You are marked, Upworlder. Even my dim old eyes can see the mantle of destiny that cloaks you. Perhaps old Rukil knows you better than you know yourself. I am old. I have lived a hundred years in the Undercity, cast down into the darkness. I know the legends and history of our people, and now you must learn it too. The great city of Taris covers the entire surface of this planet. There is no land to grow food. Kelp harvests and the creatures of the sea are our only food source. A century ago, rising levels of toxic pollution poisoned the oceans and famine swept the planet. The rich hoarded food for their own use, and the poor were left to starve and die. From what I've seen of Terrace, it doesn't look like much has changed. Except for the upper city, people here are just as bad off as the poor in your little history. But the poor rose up against this tyranny, and civil war engulfed the planet. Millions died in the fighting, and huge sections of Taurus were destroyed or abandoned. The rebellion was crushed in the end. Thousands were taken prisoner. The jails could not hold them all, and so the practice of banishing all prisoners to the Undercity was born. Many brave men and women were banished here to the Undercity for their part in the rebellion. People like my father and grandfather were cast down, along with their families. What did you expect? If they could get away with it, the Teresian nobles would stuff their own mothers down here to make more room in the upper city. Now we live a dark existence beneath the streets of Terrace. A life devoid of all hope but one. The Promised Land. And you will be the one to show us the way to get there. Legends tell of a self-sufficient colony founded just before the famine and lost during the Civil War. A paradise beneath the Undercity where droid servants tend to every need. 
For many years, I searched for the Promised Land, just as my grandfather and father did before me. When I became old and gray, my apprentice continued the search on my behalf. Sounds like a myth to me. Something to give the people here some false hope to cling to so they don't go mad with despair. I have collected many clues hinting at its location. The journal of my apprentice provides yet more information. But still, there are too many pieces missing from this puzzle. But I know my father and grandfather each had journals where they recorded their own discoveries. Perhaps with their journals, I could at last uncover its hidden location. Yes, Upworlder. Well done. However, I see that this journal alone does not have enough clues for me to solve this mystery. Too many pieces are still missing. I'm afraid that only with all three journals, my grandfather's, my father's, and my apprentice's, will I be able to discover the location of the Promised Land. I will leave this journal with you for safekeeping for now. Perhaps it will aid you in your search for the others. I wish you luck, Upworlder. For the sake of the entire village. Alright, I gotta get going. But I hope you guys have been enjoying this live stream. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and get going now, so hopefully I'll stream later on tonight. So I'll see you guys later.